It is inevitable that with so many people taking a cruise each year, some of them will die. The majority do die from natural causes, but there are a few incidents of accidents, suicides and murders on board cruise ships. In this video, you're going to find out the most common ways that people do die on cruise ships, how many die per year and what happens when somebody does die. There are many sources that quote 200 as the number of people that die on cruise ships each year. The real number is likely to be quite a bit higher because although things like murders and suicides are widely reported on, sometimes people that die from natural causes are missing from the statistics. Considering how many people are cruising at any one time, the amount that die is statistically very, very, very small. Accidents happen at sea the same way that they happen on land. The main focus of any cruise line is to keep their passengers and their crew safe, but they can't completely get rid of any chance of any accidents happening. The majority of accidental deaths that happen on cruise ships happen when guests break the rules, when they enter restricted areas. Some people do just have bad luck, and it's important to remember that accidents don't just happen on the cruise ship themselves, they also happen when people go off on excursions. One of the highest profile and most heartbreaking cases to happen in recent years on a cruise ship was that of a grandfather who dropped his 18 month old granddaughter out of a window onto the dock below. The accident happened on board Freedom of the Seas and he did plead guilty to negligent homicide. He thought that there was glass in the window. Unfortunately, the window was open. They didn't know she fell down and how he's going to live with that, I have no idea. A terrible, terrible accident. In 2019, a 16-year-old boy did die when he fell off of a cruise ship. He was trying to climb from his friend's balcony round to his balcony because he had lost his room key. If you ever do lose your room key, you can go to reception and get a new room key. I've done it. It's no trouble at all. Don't ever try climbing from balcony to balcony. Surprisingly, people do do this and people try and climb from deck to deck. Don't ever do that. Despite all of the warnings and all of the risks, some people still do do things like this. They climb from balcony to balcony. Sometimes they jump off the cruise ship. They try and stand on a railing. If a cruise line does find you doing anything like that, they will ban you from their cruise line for life. And rightly so. It's not worth it to them to have you as a guest. Accidents also happen in port. Back in 2019, there was an excursion to a volcano in New Zealand, which unfortunately erupted and 19 people died. Most of the people who died were on Royal Caribbean excursions. And this is just an example of a terrible accident. This had nothing to do with the cruise. It could have happened anywhere to anybody. As with any swimming pools, there's always a risk of people drowning and people unfortunately do very rarely, but sometimes drown in swimming pools on cruise ships. Cruise ships now, most of them have multiple swimming pools, some of them have slides, you name it, you'll probably find it on a cruise ship somewhere. On some cruise lines, you will find lifeguards by the pool, but it isn't mandatory. Royal Caribbean and Norwegian Cruise Line have started putting lifeguards by their pools, but some cruise lines still don't. In 2014, a 29-year-old woman drowned on board the Sapphire Princess, and a year later, an 8-year-old boy also drowned on board the Sapphire Princess. In 2019, a man in his 30s was found drowned on board the Caribbean Princess. Appreciate this doesn't look good for Princess, but Princess aren't the only cruise line where people drown in the swimming pools. Princess do have a lot more swimming pools than other cruise lines though, so I'm not sure if it's to do with that and to do with the fact that they actually don't have lifeguards on duty. In 2019, a 10-year-old boy drowned on a Genting cruise ship. In 2015, an 8-year-old boy drowned on Liberty of the Seas. And in 2015, a 10-year-old girl drowned on board the Norwegian Gem. Drowning in a cruise ship swimming pool is incredibly rare and you would have to be so unlucky for this to happen to you. Normally there will be many passengers around. If anything did happen, there's a lot of people to help you. Not all cruise lines have lifeguards at the moment, but I think going forward, we're gonna see more and more lifeguards stationed by the pools. What this does mean though is sometimes if you're cruising with Norwegian you'll see the lifeguard whose job it is to stand by the pool even if it's raining and nobody is there sometimes you'll still see somebody in a hat and a coat kind of shivering by the pool. Although cruise ship murders are incredibly rare, they do sometimes happen. Most of the time the victim does know the murderer. It's usually a case of an argument that gets out of hand or a previous history of some sort of abuse. For obvious reasons, murders on board cruise ships are very rarely planned. I actually couldn't find any examples when researching this video of a pre-planned cruise ship murder. It is worth noting too that guns are not allowed on cruise ships at all. So most murders that happen do involve 
throwing somebody off the cruise ship or occasionally stabbing them with some sort of weapon. There was a cruise back in 2017 on board the Emerald Princess where a lady was cruising with her husband and her three children. They had an argument and the husband beat the wife to death. He tried to drag her body out onto the balcony to throw it overboard and he was disturbed by somebody else while he was in the process of doing that. This actually tells us which cabins it happened on. So if you are cruising on the Emerald Princess, maybe avoid cabins D726 and D728. Not nice. There was a murder back in 2015 on a Holland America cruise ship. There was a couple who were taking a 14 night Caribbean cruise to celebrate Easter. And it's reported that the husband found a text message to the wife from another man. No one of course knows exactly what happened, but that's what's commonly reported. He broke some glass in the cabin to make a weapon and he stabbed her to death. After he stabbed her to death, he actually hung himself in the cabin bathroom. I'm not sure if I find it reassuring or scary that the majority of people who've been murdered on cruise ships have been by the person that they're going on the cruise with. Not sure how that makes me feel. Sadly, there are a number of suicides on cruise ships. The majority involves somebody jumping off the ship, but occasionally people do hang themselves too. It's not only passengers who commit suicide on cruise ships, but also the crew in some situations. 2020 saw an increase in the number of suicides happening on cruise ships. At the start of 2020, many crew members were on board the ships with no real plan of when they would be able to go home. There were actually five suicides just in May of 2020, from crew members who were stuck on cruise ships. I appreciate this is a bit doom and gloom, but the majority of people who do die on cruise ships do just die of natural causes. They're just not very interesting examples for this video, but don't worry, you're very, 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 very unlikely to be murdered on a cruise ship. The majority of people who do die on cruises die of things like heart attacks, like strokes. If you're somebody who already has a lot of complex medical problems that aren't treated, you're unlikely to be going on a cruise. So things like heart attacks and strokes, which can kind of hit out of nowhere, are the most common cause of death. In 2019, there was actually a passenger who was playing bingo on board the Carnival Sunshine when he suffered a stroke. He was originally sent to a hospital in the Bahamas, but they didn't have what they needed there to treat him. He was on the cruise with his wife at the time and they didn't have travel insurance. That meant that they had no way to get back to the US for the medical treatment that they needed. Amazingly, in this situation, somebody did do a fundraiser or donated the money that they needed to get back to America. But of course, that was very, very stressful for them and it did put a delay on the whole process. He unfortunately died once they got back to the US. And I think this example does just show how you need travel insurance when you go on a cruise. Don't ever go on a cruise without travel insurance. Even if you're just going to the Caribbean and you're from America, you need travel insurance. The costs associated with getting an illness or getting hurt on a cruise can be incredibly expensive. I'll put links in the description to where I recommend you get your travel insurance from, but do not cruise without travel insurance. Promise me, don't do it. I did find one story about a lady who was in her 80s who every year did a world cruise with Cunard. She passed away having just visited Honolulu in Hawaii and I think that's how I'd like to go. A world cruise every year and then you die on a cruise. That would suit me. So you might be thinking, if people are regularly dying on cruise ships, one every three or four days, they must have a process in place to deal with this, and they do. In the first instance, if somebody drops dead on a cruise, they're gonna inform their family. It's usually pretty easy for them to work out who their family are or who needs to be informed. If they're cruising as part of a group, they will tell those people. And when you go on a cruise, you normally fill out a piece of paper with your emergency contact details, and that's who's contacted when somebody dies. On a cruise, you'll find that the captain and the staff have special codes for everything. They'll come on over the tannoy and they'll say something that makes no sense to the guests because they don't want to worry the guests. I recently took a tour of the bridge of a cruise ship and they had a book there that had all of the codes and what they mean. They do vary a little bit by cruise line, but they pretty much have the same kind of codes. They got very specific. There was even codes for someone's had diarrhea in the swimming pool and someone's vomited in the swimming pool. The code for a serious medical problem on a cruise is Operation Bright Star and the code for somebody who's died on a cruise is Operation Rising Star. These codes do seem to vary between cruise lines, but Operation Rising Star seems pretty universal. On all cruise ships, you will find a morgue of sorts. This does vary depending on how big the cruise ship is, but most are able to hold around three bodies. 
It is never the intention of any cruise line to try and keep bodies in the morgue, but they have to have it there in case it does happen. If you're somebody who's taking a transatlantic cruise, a trans-Pacific cruise, some portion of a world cruise, you may have up to seven days at sea, so they need to be able to deal with that. There is a rumour that has been circulating for years, and I'm not saying that this is true at all, I just would like to mention the rumour. And the rumour is that if the cruise line has too many dead bodies and they fill up the morgue, what they will do is they will fill the ice cream freezer with the dead bodies and the passengers will all be given free ice cream. I've seen this mentioned all over the internet, loads of people have told me it over the years. I'm not sure how true it is, but I suppose it makes sense, kind of. If the cruise is from the US and there is suspected foul play on board, the FBI will come on board and they will do their usual investigations. If the cruise is somewhere else, the appropriate authorities from wherever the cruise ship is will come on board and investigate the death. The team will do the same sort of investigation that they would do on land. They might look at the CCTV cameras, they might interview guests and they'll analyse the crime scene. In the case of a suspected murder, cruise ships do have little prisons on board called brigs, so they would be able to hold anybody who they were suspicious of until the authorities arrive. It may also be the case that the cruise isn't allowed to stop at certain ports, they might not let the passengers off if they're not sure what has happened in this situation. The next thing that the cruise line needs to think about is disembarking the body and this is no easy job for them. They normally try and disembark the body early in the morning once they've got into port to try and avoid all of the guests seeing. If the death was just from natural causes, what they'll do is they'll disembark the body at the next port. Somebody needs to go with the body from the cruise party and that person has to have a passport, which just shows to me how important it is that you don't cruise without a passport. There are a few cruises you can do without a passport if you're an American taking a closed loop cruise or some cruises in Australia. But if something like this happened and you had to disembark with a body in a port, I know nobody wants to think about this, but if that did happen, you'd have to try and sort out emergency passport details on top of everything. It is definitely not worth risking this, so just get a passport. Wherever the body is disembarked, that place is responsible for issuing a death certificate and taking care of the body. Not all ports will be able to do that, so it isn't that abnormal for a cruise ship to keep a body until they get to a main port. Sometimes if cruises are cruising in the Caribbean, they'll hold on to bodies until they get back to the US. If it's not too long, if it's just a couple of days, that does make it a lot easier. Regardless of the location of the cruise, when the cruise gets back to its main port, it's going to have to explain why its number of passengers returning are different from the number of passengers that left. All cruise deaths are reported, but they're reported to the local authorities. The number of people who die on cruises is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly small, and cruise ships do have processes in place to deal with this. You're just as likely to die on a cruise as you are on land. If you were to get 30 million people per year doing anything, some of them are going to die. If this video hasn't you off taking a cruise, check out my video on 7 cruise expenses that you don't need to pay for.